the concept of my khutbah is not to make anybody feel bad or feel embarrassed, rather to learn from an Islamic standpoint of how to deal with people of special needs in our lives or the lives of those we know. When we use the term special needs, we normally think of someone who has a physical weakness. And to make the point clear, I can bring the story to your attention about the mother who has been caring for a disabled son for over 20 years. Now, let's see the, the kind of disability or special needs her son was going through. He is a son who cannot talk, a son who cannot dress himself, a son who cannot feed himself. We can only imagine the enormity of the burden this mother carries every day as his primary caregiver. Similarly, there are thousands of moms and dads and many volunteers women and men who are doing the same today. They choose to carry huge burden for disabled children and adults or adults. They choose to do it not because they were forced to do it, and not because they were, uh, or not for financially gain, but they do it with pleasure. Whether we recognize that or not, whether we are conscious of it or not, the fact remains that we need to bring to our attention and into the forefront of our minds that we need to strengthen our understanding and educate ourselves of how we interact with people of special needs and educate ourselves of how to serve people with special needs. Most important, do not do it out of pity and sympathy. Rather, to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me address the story of the man who had a handicapped mother and wanted to give her the honor of taking her for Hajj. What we know that Hajj is associated with great hardship. 
just to circle the Kaaba is enough to understand doing it for seven times. I know today you can put her on a wheelchair and then push the wheelchair and that's it. But this man did not choose to do that. I know today people can have special people, uh, they carry uh, a, a tool that the mother can sit comfortably and then they can go around the Kaaba and then they do the tawaf, the walking between Safa and Marwa. But this man did not choose to do that. This man simply, he wanted to honor his mother. He carried her on his shoulders and he started to go around the Kaaba and he did it. And then he started to do the tawaf and, and, and the sa'i, and he did it. He came to a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later and related to him what he did to his mother. And he says, did I serve her well? Like, did I pay her back? some of the things that she did for me. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, maybe all what you did was equal to a little pain she had during your delivery, when, when she delivered you as an infant. So what this man did, if we want to focus on his story, he did not see a burden in carrying his mother. But he did see a gain, and this gain was to accomplish a goal. So it's not out of pity, but out of pleasure. He felt pleasure doing it. And actually, this is when we go over the Quran, and we go to Surah at tawbah this is chapter number nine. And uh, the ayah number 71, what do we find? We find, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ The believing man and the believing woman. بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ They are protectors of one another. So our responsibilities as Muslims is to protect one another. And the preference here can be given to those who need the protection, those who live as people of certain needs, unable to function like us, unable to function like normally people do, but they have some physical needs, and, and thus here is the responsibility, and here is what a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ الدُّنْيَا You relieve, you relieve a person from the overburden of life. And if you do that, نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً مِنْ كُرَبِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah will relieve you 
Allah will relieve you of the burden that we all will have on the day of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the day of judgment. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the ayah, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ Then we continue with the ayah, and it is concluded as, أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ Those who do that, Allah will bless them, will give them rahmah, will give them special gift. That's what we do when we start a prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We seek the rahmah of Allah because we do need it in our life. And, and let me tell you, I did mention those who live normal life, but actually, even those who live a normal life, even we as a human, those who live with normal life, Imagine the kind of stress that we have. Imagine the burden that we do when we go to work, when we interact with people, when we deal with people of different mind, different understanding, the suffering that we endure. And you know, sometimes I say, I'm really a person of a special need. We need to learn how to communicate. That's the same thing, but different problem. People who really, not like us, that, oh, we suffer a little bit here and there, but this is an ongoing suffering. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received a woman. And she says to him, Inni usra wa inni atakashif. So this pro woman came with two problems. First problem is her disability. Second problem is her concern that parts of her body are shown when she suffer seizure. She had a problem, seizure. And maybe you are aware of, of that kind of uh, disease where the person becomes totally helpless. So this woman came to our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says to him, make dua for me. Make dua for me that I don't have this disease. I recover from this disease. And a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to her, in shi'ti, if you want, da'awtu laki. I'll make dua for you. Wa in shi'ti sabarti. Wa lakil jannah. Or you be patient and you tolerate your sickness, you tolerate your disease, and you will be rewarded with the Jannah, with heaven on the day of judgment as a reward for enduring the suffering. And the woman said, Asbir. She said, I'll be patient. But please, Make dua for me, Allah atakashif. Make dua for me that when that thing happen, I don't want parts of my body to be seen by people during having the seizure. And a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he prayed for her. And, and this woman never had the problem of the dua of the problem that she expressed. So basically, a Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling the women that 
physical healing was one thing, but spiritual healing was much more important. Like all of us, this woman needed the salvation of her soul in order to avoid the real problem of her eternal separation from the Creator, but rather she wanted to gain another goal that is earning the paradise or the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Probably that, not that Masajid addressed this issue. And even me, it's the first time I, I never thought that I need, I need to address this issue. But alhamdulillah, today awareness is spread all over Islamic centers in the U.S. and the world. And people started, started to learn how to react with people of a special need. And for the first time, an Islamic organization called Muhsin was established to address the needs of people with special needs. And what this organization believe is that we believe, and I'm quoting their website, we believe a better society for persons with disabilities is a better society for all. That's the, the goal that we need to understand, that taking care of people who are disabled, it's no more a kind of charity we do for them. It is we do our share and we do what our deen, our religion asked us to do by caring about them. There is a special term that is used by the, the fuqaha. It's called Ahl al-Bala. Those, those are the people of al-bala. Al-bala is similar to special needs, disability. Those are the people of bala. And they are of two kinds. The people themselves and the people who are caring for them. Those are called ahlul, ba ahlul bala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reserved a special reward for them on the day of judgment. Why do we need to understand that? Because life is a priceless. Life is a precious gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We live, and sometimes we say it, we live in abnormal world. Where, where we see many of the blessings, the bounties of Allah are abused, abused by people. Things, we hear about it the first time. Things was created. And this is an abnormal world that we live in what we need to do as Muslims. Rather, we turn to blame this one and that one and say, why Allah did that and why Allah? We need to learn how to invest in the life of a disabled child or adult. And what I say that do not jump off the boat. Because sometimes uh, people just give up. They, they give up their child in adoption. They give up their child to an organization. Oh, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I, I cannot imagine or see myself 
uh, taking care of a disabled child. So to them I say, do not jump off the boat and give that opportunity, give up that opportunity to someone else and know that your child will still be looked after by another. And I want to give those who have these types of children a word that will be a word of goodness. Do you know that not only paradise that you will get, but even in this world, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with such a challenged child and Allah will open other doors for you. Many people, they say, we felt it. Many people express that, that we felt that, yes, we are struggling in one area, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for us other doors, many other doors. Your sustenance will increase. Your business will start to do well. You might be struggling to actually look after your child, but some other things happen. It will bring husband and wife closer together. That was not close before that. And that thing was expressed by the people who, who did care for their disabled child. And, and they said, we, we felt, I felt that me and my husband are more closer than before that. And some other things happened. Research. You heard about the person who was taking care of a child, his child, who was having cancer. The child died after that. And the man decided to build an institute for cancer research. John Hopkins, if you read about his story, how he managed, despite his disability, they made a special chair for him, computerized. He was unable to speak, but the, the computer can pick up the vibration near, under his mouth and translate it into words. And he used to lecture while he is having a disabled life. There are many children with disability who are so smart and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted them with many things that we do not have. And finally, an open invitation for you. Read Surah Al-Sharh. You know, this Surah, as we know, we read it, the Surah, uh, we know it off by heart uh, from the time we were children. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Now, let me focus on fa'inna ma'al usri yusra. Inna ma'al usri yusra. It's repeated twice as assurance for us. And when you read the translation of Inna Ma'al Usri Yusra, the translation sa says, many translators, they, that's how they translated. They, they said, after hardship comes ease. After hardship comes ease. Now, when, when you read the, the ayah, inna ma'a, it's not after, it's with. With hardship come ease. With hardship. It, it means that, that as, as a human, yes, 
It is true that we may suffer and our loved ones, our children whom, whom either know or our own, we may see them suffering, but that hardship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, with it will come so many benefits uh, for, for us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all learn the beauty of our deen and learn how to care for one another and learn how to care with people of special needs. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد عباد الله اتقوا الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له هاديا Dear believers, I have a couple of announcements that I received and I can relate them to you to the best of my ability. Uh, uh, first, uh, our prayers for uh, Sheikh Bahauddin, he is uh, having a heart surgery, so please uh, pray for him and pray for his recovery and well-being, and may Allah grant him comfort. And Brother uh, Hatim Mustafa, he passed away, and uh, uh, his family is requesting that we uh, make prayers, special prayers for him. May Allah uh, have rahmah on him. Uh, uh, ICNA Relief is having their annual back-to-school giveaway uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. So there are still in need of volunteers. So if you would like to sign up, please go to their office in room 109 here at the Islamic Center and, and do that. And finally, I have, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce you uh, with uh, a lady, Ms. Louis Jen, and uh, who is uh, running uh, for Boston City Council. And uh, she will be ad addressing uh, the congregation uh, after I finish uh, the prayer. And uh, uh, finally, I say that there are between uh, 34 and 43 million people who have some type of disability. There are 9 uh, million people of all ages are severely disabled and need personal assistance for daily activities. These are the uh, recent statistics for us to uh, to, to learn about uh, this disability issue. So today is a day that was designated uh, as Disability Awareness Friday, a day in ISBCC Masjid that affirms the responsibility of ISBCC to minister uh, to all people of special need. So inshallah, you will be seeing uh, some activities uh, introduced or will start uh, by the ISBCC. So I, I thus in, encourage all of you to consider 
giving a gift, a financial gift to this Islamic center, to this house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وصلوا على نبيكم محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد صلى الله عليه فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما يا الله bless our spouses and our children and grandchildren help us have the courage and the energy to do what is good for us and for the community Ya Allah, we ask you to have mercy upon us and those who are facing tremendous difficulties and hardship and those who are facing countless pain and the trauma. May you bless and protect them all and remove the hardship and difficulties upon them. Allahumma akrimna bi karamik wa a'izzana bi izzik. Allahumma iftah lana abwaab rahmatik. وأجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم اصرف عنا العسر والغلاء والبلاء واشملنا باليسر والرخاء اللهم أدخلنا الجنة برحمتك وجد علينا من فضلك ورضوانك ولا تحرمنا من النظر إلى وجهك الكريم اللهم اشرح صدورنا ونور قلوبنا واجعل جنة الفردوس الأعلى هي دارنا وارحم أمواتنا وبلغنا مما يرضيك آمالنا اللهم كما جمعتنا في هذا المسجد على طاعتك فاجمعنا في الآخرة في جنتك ودار أمنك يا رب العالمين اللهم ثبت قلوبنا على الإيمان واختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا استقيموا إلى الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله سووا صفوفكم ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم صلوا صلاة موافقة الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي 
لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك So I've been asked by the secretary of ISBCC to uh, introduce uh, Rosie Louis Jen. Uh, 
to you, to you, to the community. And uh, she is a candidate running for Boston uh, City Council. I, I usually stay more, but I have to leave because I have a long trip. Assalamu alaikum. Kuti, you want to come up front, say a few words to the community? Here she is coming. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, my name is Ruthsi Louis-Jean. I am thankful so much for, to the Masjid for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I am a candidate for Boston City Council at large. I won't take too much of your time on this Friday, but I hope that in 18 days, I am able to earn your vote and your support. I am a daughter of the city. I grew up in Mattapan and High Park. My parents are immigrants from Haiti, and they came here with nothing and worked really, really hard to create a better life for me and my three sisters. Um, I went to public schools here my entire life. And then I went to Harvard Law School. I'm an attorney and I worked with Senator Warren as her top attorney on her campaign. And I just helped a nonprofit here get $10 million to help working class families buy homes in Boston. That's the work that I want to continue to do on Boston City Council, make affordable homes affordable for all of our families, improve all of our schools for all of our young kids, supporting our small and local businesses, and creating good parks and preparing for a good future here. Again, my name is Ruthsi Louis-Jean. I speak uh, Haitian Creole, I speak French, and I speak Spanish. I believe in a city where all of our neighborhoods can prosper, where we're including everyone at the table, regardless of what you look like, what language you speak, or where you live. I spent some of my time growing up in West Africa, living in Senegal, learning from our Muslim brothers and sisters. So I feel very comfortable among you today. I know that if you vote for me on September 14th, you will have an ally always in Boston City Council. So thank you so much for your time. Again, my name is Ruth Z. Louis-Jean, and I would love to have your vote and support on September 14th. Thank you so much. And thank you to Tahir for the invite to come here. Thank you so much.